All right, today I'm going to read Tripping the Circuit Breaker. This was an essay I had to write for a college class on April 27th, 2008. It was about a barn that my best friend and I played in. Tripping the Circuit Breaker. Robbie and I loved computers. It was Robbie who first taught me how to program. It was Robbie who was always taking computers apart, and I would always watch. I was the one who first figured out the best way to incorporate sound into the small programs we each constantly wrote. And when we weren't doing things to computers that only licensed professionals did, we played games. Hours and hours with old 133s and 286s, 8 to 16-bit sounds, 256 colors, and of course... 640 by 480 resolutions. The 90s were when games were at their best, when developers didn't pump all their efforts into good graphics and actually focused heavily on story and gameplay. Like his father, Robbie always worked with electronics. His entire house was filled with what was then the latest technology. We used to go downstairs to his basement and he'd show me his newest game. Those were the days when the internet was relatively new, and playing with other people from around the world was amazing. Although, Robbie and I always played Descent over dial-up together, even though he was about 200 feet away. I even remember one fine day when he played against some Germans, and he asked me to swear at them and tell them how bad they were at that game. Robbie loved to play my computer games too, as he would usually come over to my house to play. My father was always building new things around the house. The jungle gym he had built years before was still undergoing renovations by Robbie, Alex, Yana, and myself. The four of us, of course. After my dad finished several ponds, a garden, some arbors, and some cement work here and there, he now wanted to have a small red barn built. It was to be located near the very front of the driveway, about 15 feet from the jungle gym. This barn was about 9 or 10 feet tall, roughly half as tall as the jungle gym. It was painted slightly dark red with white trim and dark gray shingles on the roof. It had two windows on the sides of it, with one small octagon-shaped window near the very top on the front side, the side facing the left side of the driveway. It had a width of about 8 by 8 feet on the ground. Before the barn was constructed, my dad had dug out a very small about three by three feet hole in the ground that was about two feet deep and had small cement blocks on the floor. This was to become the wine cellar. The inside of the barn was very nice. Smooth, medium tan color wood lined all the walls. It had a beige carpet floor and there was even a small sleeping loft in the upper part of the barn with plywood covering the loft supports. The floor, of course, had a trap door under the carpet and a very small, about two rungs, cream-colored wooden ladder to allow access to the wine cellar. The barn's intended use was as a kind of study area. It was used for this purpose by my father, who lined a wall with dark reddish-brown bookshelves. These shelves were filled with various history books and a few others. Under the window located on the wall to the right of the door was a solid dark cream wooden desk with my dad's old coffee-colored captain's chair in front of the desk. I imagine the barn must have been a sanctuary for my father who loved history, the military, and finances. Of course, Robbie and I completely changed that barn the very instant we realized my dad wasn't using it as much as he had hoped. That barn was to be overstuffed with what was then the latest technology. Soon enough, my dad somehow agreed to let Robbie and I take control of the barn. The jungle gym was already exclusively ours, and now we had acquired a structure that was built by licensed contractors. However, there was a catch. We were not to build or paint on the barn like we could with the jungle gym. Robbie and I had no distinct plan for the barn. With wagons in hand, we simply began to haul various computers and their components up from his house. Robbie must have sought to create a kind of technological outpost for his many, many devices. 
what we brought into that barn was limited only by its size. The first order of business was to connect power to the barn. Fortunately, this was a very easy task. Robbie and I went into my garage and looked for the largest extension cord we could find. My garage was, and still is to this day, a gigantic mess. Anything that was outdated was there. Anything that was still not yet unpacked from the move from Germany years before was there. Old phone books, old letters, old tools, and anything else that we didn't need at any particular moment was in my garage, and it was dirty. Years of dust had collected on the areas of the garage that were never used. A few dead leaves were also here and there throughout. Until the light was turned on, the garage was almost completely dark. Every time anyone walked in, they could always smell the scent of dust and concrete, the general smell of an old building. Our garage was also usually very cold. After some time searching, we found an extension cord that was about 50 feet long. That was almost long enough, but it still couldn't reach the nearest outlet. So we looked through the garage again and found another cord that we could connect to the original 50-foot one. Naturally, Robbie plugged this extension cord into the nearest outlet he found. This was in the next room over from the garage, a place called the train room, because that was where I kept my train set from many years earlier. He connected this to the other cord and ran it through the jungle gym, under the barn, and there was a small gap between the barn's foundation and the cellar up through the cellar trap door and plugged a power strip into it. Another extension cord soon followed thereafter. The barn now had power flowing to it, and we intended to use every bit. Now began the simple task of hooking up all the computers. We had three Windows computers from about 1996 and one small laptop from the 80s. There would soon be another computer installed, but that was good enough for now. After all the computers had power, Robbie and I connected them to the internet, with 56k modems of course, via a long phone cable that was run through the same place as the extension cords. We were so good at making the barn functional, we might as well have coupled running water with all our other hookups. Then the LAN party started. LAN is a computer acronym for Local Area Network. A LAN party is a party in which friends bring over their computers and play video games with each other usually for hours or even days at a time. In addition to the low bandwidth phone cable that provided us with access to the internet, Robbie brought up as many LAN or Ethernet cables along with a hub to connect everything. Later, we even brought a television over and played my Nintendo 64. Sadly, we never connected a coaxial cable to our television in order to watch broadcasts. Robbie's speakers were also included. The following is a list of games we played together in the barn for hours. Descent, Descent 2, Descent 3, GoldenEye 64, Commander Keen, Jill of the Jungle, Super Mario 64, Diablo, Starcraft, Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri, Quake 2, Mario Kart, Cubasic Gorillas, Cubasic Nibbles, and Jedi Knight, and various other games for which I have forgotten the titles. Robbie once made the observation that we had a very good connection in the barn, referring to the extremely high bandwidth of our LAN. We were so proud of what we had turned the barn into that we didn't share our games with any of the neighbors. <laughs> Robbie had the ambition to expand our LAN parties beyond the barn. He proposed we create a wireless network, something that we commonly use today, but not so much in the 90s, which ran between the barn and his house. We would have been able to play many other games in the barn, while Robbie stayed at home and played with us. At the time, we had no idea, or the technology, to create the wireless network. So, Robbie posted the idea on his website and asked for help as to what must be done to create such a connection. No one ever responded. Of course, now, were Robbie and I still close friends and live near each other, we would be able to set up this giant wireless LAN party in about three hours. One day, we found out just how much power the barn was using. We were just playing one of our games as usual in there when all of a sudden all the power went off. 
Robbie immediately came to the conclusion that we had tripped a circuit breaker in my house somewhere. He was right, and soon he turned off all the components in the barn and went to the garage to reset the switch. It was amazing the power lasted as long as it had, seeing as how we had four computers, a television, several speakers, and various lights in there. The years passed, and the barn was used less and less. Robbie did once ask to take back a few of his computers, but for the most part things collected dust and spiders there. The barn smelled very moldy, and no one ever wanted to enter it anymore. It became a large storage closet. The poor barn finally met its demise early last year. Most of what it contained was long gone. There was a large storm in January that swept through my hometown and surrounding areas. It was so powerful that it could actually blow over trees, and one of the biggest trees at my house fell right onto the barn. It was an amazing sight to behold. I came home from college one weekend and of course brought my digital single lens reflex along. When I got there, the driveway was a huge mess, and most importantly, the barn had almost completely collapsed under the weight of the giant tree. A while later, we began the task of throwing away the debris left by the destroyed barn. Among the ruins, I found my old IBM. So many memories of the computer came back. I remembered how Robbie installed 16 more megabytes of RAM for me, giving the IBM a total of 32 which was not bad for its time, but certainly not great. We also found the old, thick, black laptop from the 80s. Its little amber screen would never shine again. We found an old extension cord Robbie and I had put there years before. The phone and Ethernet cables were also lying around, and in one dusty corner was a power strip. A little two-button mouse and keyboard were also there. All of these electrical components were ruined. Even though the barn is gone, like the jungle gym before it, it still exists forever in all of our memories. From a boring study, to an exciting gaming place, to a nostalgic pile, the barn served us well. Maybe someday that barn could be rebuilt, or maybe it's best to leave it forever in the past.